Okay, a lot of people have asked me, first of all, I'm not up to talk about Woodstock's uh, this set at all. I mean, I'm, I tell people, the 80s or the 60s, 20 years later, <laughs> old feathers and a brand new bird, these are the good old days, yes. Woodstock was created for wallets, and the universe took over and did a little dance. <laughs> And it was amazing. I have a line in the movie, there is a little bit of heaven in every disaster area. But right now, if this planet Earth is not a certified disaster area, I don't know what is. And this little bit of heaven is a chunk of it right here as we're exchanging a little data about humor and civil disobedience. But after Woodstock, uh, after Woodstock we were asked to do a rodeo in Texas. No, we weren't. Excuse me, my, my chromosomes have amnesia here. Uh, we got back from Woodstock, and, and uh, everybody had moved to Laytonville from all over America. Not to Laytonville, to Yano. See, it was that last bud that did it. Okay, they moved. <laughs> and and uh, the hog farm looked like a DP camp with a view. But right away, this gig came in. Go to Texas. The, the cowboys are driving through the hippie campgrounds with whale hooks attached to ropes on their bumpers looking to snag freaks in sleeping bags. I remember arriving and pitching my tent between three trees, getting up in the morning, grabbing a bunch of merry pranksters and hog farmers, and going to the cowboy rodeo grounds and sitting down with those rodeo clowns and breaking out one of them skinny cigarettes of uh, sensational sensimia. And next thing you know, the Bronc Riders come over and say, give me some of this. <laughs> and the Brahma Bull Riders are all sitting there, getting it on, just being uh, uh, sentient critters on the planet. And we explain our problem, and they say, well, let's go over there. So we all get in our cars and trucks, and we drive over to the hippie campground on Lake Dallas, and uh, swept the police away. They weren't letting people in with short hair at the moment, but we were hired to do security again. I remember getting off the plane at Woodstock when we didn't know we were security, and the police said, well, you're security. You're doing security. I thought we were doing free kitchens and fire trails, and I had a, a bear suit and a rubber shovel. And if hippies did, did dopey fires, I was going to beat on them with a rubber shovel. So remember, folks, <laughs> so, the, so the world press says, well, you're doing security. I said, well, do you feel secure? The guy says, yeah. I said, well, see, it's working. <laughs> ah, fucking Moses. He says, well, what are you going to use for riot control? I said, well, we use cream pies and seltzer bottles. He's writing it down, cream pies and seltzer bottles. <laughs> so, okay, so here I am in Texas, once again, the police chief. And, uh... The cowboys started living on the roofs of their cars, and this was at Lake Dallas. And everybody started skinny dipping. They saw the skinny dipping in, uh, in the Woodstock uh, publicity, and they wanted to put their uh, bare cheeks into the sun and, and make a statement, you know? So there's all these bare butts flashing in the surf, and uh, it was just wonderful. The pay stage was six miles away uh, in a speedway. And I remember going down there and first of all, thanking uh, the chemists of Texas because people would just come into the freak out tent, sniff the incense and giggle and leave. <laughs> I went to the sound booth, which was my friend Chip Monk, who made that wonderful announcement at Woodstock. If you have taken the green acid, you have just been poisoned. <laughs> and Chip has a voice like a uh, melted Hershey bar being poured in your ear. Well, we're standing there, and uh, this is in Texas, and this Janis Joplin is on stage, and this guy comes running up, he says, Wavy Gravy! No, he says, hey, hey! I'm not Wavy Gravy yet. He says, hey, hey, Hugh Romney! Hugh Romney, look here! And he had this, he said, we heard at Woodstock you wanted to use seltzer bottles and cream pies. Well, I don't know where the pie shells are, but here's this case of Ready Whip. Do you know what to do with it? I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what to do with it. <laughs> 
Chip, you know what to do? Yeah, I know what to do. So we take the ready whip and, and we can just touch it lightly and you can get a, a fairly substantial hit of nitrous oxide. So I'm going for the gas and Janice hits this note that is like all the subways in the world kind of gargling. And my fingers slipped and I blasted five pounds of whipped cream into my cerebral cortex. It starts coming out my nose, just as the world press come to me. Here he is, the voice of Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we went to sleep, we were exhausted. I'm woken up at four o'clock in the morning by the mayor and the police chief. What is it, what is it? Wake up, wake up. This, wake up, wake up, that's a habit. Wake up, he said, I said, what, what, what? He said, well, and, and the mayor, the mayor of the they said, well, the Job's daughters can't handle the skinny. They're freaked out. And they're going to call the National Guard unless you can do something about it. Because you people showed the world at Woodstock that you can police yourselves. And you can just feel it coming, honey, thick and disgusting. But what are you going to do? I said, well, how about a couple truckloads of watermelon for our free kitchen and the keys? to your boat. I knew he had this big boat. And he gave me the keys so fast, I knew there was a problem. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I give him to Peter White Rabbit, who's an old salt, and he grabs uh, the patrolman's uh, white football-type hat, and we put one of those suckers in a siren that spit it on the top of his hat. And I had this cowboy hat that used to belong to Tom Mix with a yarmulke inside that Lenny Bruce gave me so I could say, howdy, goyim and a Mae West, and a loud hailer, and we hit the surf, <laughs> going around in the motorboat, and I see the first naked hippie, and I jump in the water, I'm treading water with my loud hailer, I says, Ahoy Nudo. This is what me? <laughs> Ahoy Nudo. The job starters have gone nuts. If you want to get high, you have to put your pants on. Can you dig it? Uh, hey man, I guess so. Okay. I said, well, yeah, go swim over and tell that other guy. Okay. And <laughs> ahoy, Nudo! Ahoy, Nudo! Ahoy, Nudo! Put your pants on. <laughs> Until finally, finally, as the sun is setting a lazy peach, I am so smug. My voice is like a raw hamburger, but I'm so smug because there's not a bare ass in sight. <laughs> I says, well, Peter. It looks like we done it. At that moment, here come a naked water skier with a heart on. True story. Follow that son of a bitch <laughs> around the lake. <laughs> Three times, we run out of gas and laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> I stagger back to the campsite and the free stage. The free stage is about 207 foot kunga drummers with filed teeth just wailing on their kunga drums, and I don't know what possessed me. I don't know where it came from. I laid down like a mad moth with a live mic in my hand, and I said, this is wavy gravy on the floor. Please do not dance on the wavy gravy. And these guys are dancing. Shit, there's a dude down there. They figure I had a stroke and they're dancing around me. And Ken Babs, he's up on another mic. He, uh, one of the pranksters said, This is Mumbly Wumbly on mic number two. Come in, Wavy Gravy on the floor. Said, this is Wavy Gravy on the floor. And I looked down and I saw the clown from the rodeo being sold a joint by a long hair for $6. <laughs> I said, This is Wavy Gravy on the floor. I see this fine rodeo clown being sold a joint for six dollars. Could we have all the marijuana on the stage, please? Could we have all the grass on the stage? All the grass on the stage. And the cougar drummers start to pick it up. The grass on the stage. All the I look down, there's a pile of shit there, man. I said, whoa! Okay, if six people say you roll shit good, come on up and roll. Otherwise, stay put, we'll just toss them out. And there's all these dudes kept to the waist, growing joints, one-handed. The drums are going and the joints are going. This cloud of smoke goes up over Texas, you know? <laughs> and at that moment, there is this disembodied voice that floats over the stage and says, B.B. King is here with his bus, and he's going to play for free. Could we clear the stage? And I looked around, and there was nobody there but me. 
This is before my third spinal fusion, if you can believe that. I'm getting up real slow, and I feel this hand on my shoulder. And I look up, and there is B.B. King. He looks down at me, he says, You wavy gravy? I says, yes, sir. He says, well, wavy gravy, we can work around you. And he leans me up against his amplifier. <laughs> and from out of the wings comes Johnny Winter. And it's black, and it's black, and it's white, and it's blue. Celestial jelly. Some of the Lord's own jam, don't you know? Woo! And it's everybody's reward for picking up the trash and putting on their pants. And a tiny tip of Texas went to heaven. Yeah. Now, when I got back to California, I was uh, teaching uh, improvisational theater games to neurologically handicapped kids. I had a grant at Cal State, and my classes were filmed and taped through one-way glass. And I walked into this new bunch of kids, and I said, Hi, my name's Wavy Gravy. After the class, the professors come running in, they said, oh, Keep that name, you saved a week's orientation. So I've just been waving gravy ever since. Yeah. Okay. Anybody see my bubbles? You want to see if there's any bubbles? Somebody want to hand me that bag? That white bag here. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. 